I'm here today to uh, just show you a little bit about how to use pan pastels. I'm working on Pastel Map, which is a wonderful paper that I really enjoy. It's soft, but it has a lot of tools. And I'm using the pan pastels with all the different tools. And I'm going to be doing um, kind of a sunset sky, but I've played with the colors a little bit. So I'll show you how you can get started and your colors. Just have a little fun with this meeting. So let's get started. Action. Okay, what I like to do when I'm working on this yellow is I want to do a little sketch. Um, and I'm using this uh, tool, which is sort of a filbert shape, which I really like. So I'm going to load it with some medium gray and just kind of sketch in where things are. So I'm going to start here with this cloud and just loosely find these lines so that I can see sort of the big shapes. You can see how you get this really elegant line with these very soft pastels. Now I'm going to I'm going to work this gray pastel into the colors and so that's why I've kind of chosen these colors. And I'm just very loosely indicating where things are. So I like using this yellow color to indicate the lighter clouds. Again, just loosely catching where they're located. I can relocate things later. It's not just like anytime you use your stick pastels, you, know, you can change things very, very easily. I'll add another one. Well, we'll go with that. I also like this little guy up here. <laughs> so I'm putting him in here. What I can do is just wipe sideways on my paper towel, and that takes a lot of the color off, so I can change colors. I'll just put this down so I can use it later. Now I'm going to think about the color of this sky, and there's a wonderful tool, it's, uh, this sponge, which I really enjoy using. It's so soft. See how soft it is? It just moves nicely, but it's firm at the same time. So what I'm going to do is load up this sponge with a couple of different blues. I'm going to start with a fairly dark turquoise color, and I'm adding another color to it, and I love the way I can mix these two. Let me show these to you separately so that you can kind of see. This is the turquoise, and this is the darker blue, cobalt, ultramarine, I'm not sure. But I'm mixing those two together on the pack, and you'll notice that it really doesn't matter. I can, I can just go all different directions on this paper, and eventually, as I get the color built up, it works out so well. So I don't worry about trying to smooth everything out. One of the things you want to remember, that this pastel that I'm using is, I mean, it's not dustless, but it's so low dust that I can load this with a lot of pastel and still blend it in, and I don't have dust falling off. I'm gonna wipe it off and go with a slightly lighter color. And I'm gonna go with a lighter turquoise. Um, and it's kind of gonna look like a big jump to start with, but stay with me and we'll get there together. can blend different colors now. I'm using a little bit lighter turquoise. And kind of obliterated a cloud there, but I don't think it'll matter. I just don't think anything beats these pastels for blendability. <laughs> it's such sheer, sheer color. And you can blend so nicely. As soon as I get a little further along here, I just it all out. So I'm going to establish with maybe a medium gray, probably something similar to this one, all of this cloud area and any dark clouds that I'm going to use because I can play with layering the colors later. So I'll go with 
this one. And I, I sort of messed up this guy over here. I want to put him back in. So that's indicating a cloud. And I like this. I get big shapes. I'm not concerned with details at this point. I think this is a little bit lighter gray than I used for this sketch, which is kind of useful because I can see some of the lines through the sheer pastel. One of the things you're going to find as you get into using pan pastels is that they do things that your sticks don't do. I don't think anybody ever intended pan pastels to replace stick pastels per se but to enhance and to do different things. And I think the one thing that this does better than a stick will ever do is put down sheer color. So as you learn control, you really can get these beautiful sheer effects because colors in the foreground tend to be warmer. I'm going to use a warm, dark purple for these mountains. Again, not worrying about detailed shapes. And I just keep wiping off the pad a little bit. I think I'll go with some black. Got some warm sort of green down in here. And really all I want to do at this point is establish the shapes. I'm not concerned about details. Just the shapes and the values. That's pretty good. Now I'm going to do something that's fun. I'm going to flop this over, and I'm going to find a side that's relatively clean, and I'm going to do the lights. So let's start with, actually I'm going to start with white. And I'm remembering that the light's coming from down below, so I'm going to put some strokes of white in on the bottom of these clouds. You know, one of the things that I just love about these tools is that in painting, we're always taught, maybe you learned this too, that we should use the largest brush we can for the longest time we can. And what that does is it keeps our strokes fresh. So using these big tools, these big softy sponges, um, I get large strokes that are juicy and effective. Uh, now I'm going to tweak these as I go along and they're going to have a lot more um, detail and edges and all of that. But these big juicy strokes keep your painting looking fresh and painterly in a way that other things don't. So I recommend staying with the largest tool you can use for as long as you can use it. You'll know when you get to the point where it's time to change because you'll get frustrated and you can't make it work. So you've got to move down to a smaller tool. And I'm going to grab some bright, 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 bright and sock it to an orange. Because I know that as I go along, I'm going to flavor that with a lot of other colors, okay? So it's not going to end up being that bright. Okay, let's pull some yellow into that orange as well. Now see how brilliant that is? And the sun is really kind of coming from off on the left side, in my opinion. So that's what I'm doing. Well, we're here in the neighborhood. Let's grab some yellows to put into these clouds. Using this big wedge sponge, it'd be just fine. Some blues, that turquoise back into the cloud. Let's get that dark turquoise in place. I love this color. Staying in the same value family, kind of. I'm going to we're going to move into some warm purples and red violets. And I've mixed those two together. Let's see how that works. Yeah. Okay. 
actually what I'll do is establish more of an edge on these. Get a little shape into it now. See how it gives this nice looseness. More turquoise. I really love this turquoise. It's so pretty. Going, I went back to the wedge sponge here just to kind of keep it moving. I've gone back and forth between it and the round one. You get different sort of edges as you do that. And they can be effective and interesting. So you should use your tool. Plus you can squish them up and do all kinds of other shapes so that you don't just always get this. I'm switching over to a different blue that's a little brighter and darker. I think that's going to serve nicely in here. Okay. I'm always interested in finding colors that are the right value. And that's one of the things I love about this set, too, is the values are easy to determine and organize. And you can really, you know, your, your colors are always right where you put them. <laughs> you don't move around. And I'm grabbing this lighter shade, tint of yellow. I'm firing it in here where the sun's hitting more. I'll come back over it because the, um, the mountains should reside over the top of the sky. I find it's always a good idea to reestablish the mountain shapes over the top of any sky that you put down. So I'm not worrying too much about what's happening down here at this point. Let's see, I kind of want to do some of the littler shapes in here. I love the palette that I can create by mixing and blending so many of these colors. It really gives a unity of color to a piece if you choose to limit your palette. Again, this is that original orange. Just putting a lick of it lightly along the edge of these. It's just very, very thin, very sheer. A little more specific now. Kind of come in here and decorate that one. I'm going to use a green now. I'm actually getting into a, a green or blue. One of the things I recognize is that oftentimes the yellow of the sun flavors the colors. I'm actually thinking this green. Yeah, see how that flavors it nicely? Now I can kind of lose the edges of these clouds. As I'm doing that, I'm realizing that I really want some stronger blues up in here. So get back into those. Get this blended in. Punch. Sometimes when I'm working on an area where I know I'm going to use that color, I'll pull the, the pan out so that I can just stand right here and I have to keep bending over. And that's wonderfully convenient and easy to do. tiny bit of orange in here. Just, I, I want to get the ghost of this color in right now. Probably more into those. those three. And then I'm also going to um, reestablish the sky shapes around these three little clouds.
Come back with some white, reestablish that light. Let it really hit on here now. Again, remembering that clouds are always so soft, so I don't want to overdo any sharp edges. But one of the things I can do that I just love is out here I can start to, let's do it up here, I can start to get these little bits and dabs of edges being soft. Picking up some of that yellow color underneath, not much, just a little bit. Getting the, the dancing quality of these soft clouds, which are the stars of my show here, so. Exciting. And now that I'm looking at it, I realize that this cloud and this cloud are awfully similar in size and very similar in shape. So I'm going to kind of take this one cloud down. And the nice thing is I can really just carve it down. Okay. One of the things that after many, many years of working with sticks, I found myself doing was um, sticking my fingers in to the pan pastels to try and move things around. And oddly enough, they're so sheer that they don't move that much. Now that's a wonderful advantage. Lighten the sky a little bit down in here. So I'm mixing together a pale turquoise and a white. And I actually mix them on the palette to blend the colors, but then this paper invites blending so beautifully. And with the sheer pan pastel colors, you can just create this lovely sense of blending right here on the paper. It's very satisfying. Added a little green, a little pale green in here because again, I think the sky is getting a little greener as it gets towards the yellow of the setting sun. So adding that too. But see how adding these brights, the bright light whites, um, gives drama to the darks. That's what this is about. My style of painting is very loose and painterly. I enjoy the way these little sponges allow me to do this kind of painterly touch. Notice how I can take this turquoise that I just put in here and literally blend it down in to the purple that was already there. I really like that. Sometimes the long-handled approach gives a nice gesture. To it. So if you're used to painting with paintbrushes, you'll really love that. I see some similar repetitious shapes from the tip of the sponge that I used. So what I'm going to do, I think, is with this applicator, I'm going to loosen those edges a little bit. Look at that. Do you see what I just did? This pad had some yellow on it, and it's absolutely beautiful. So, you know when you find something, <laughs> use it. About the last thing I think I'll do in the sky itself is add these little bits of um, darker clouds, and I'm, I'm going to use this shape to do it. I suspect that this turquoise, which is predominant, will probably be the color that I want. I may mix a little purple color into it. There we go. 
Okay. So I'll put down the turquoise and then add with the purple where it needs it. This is just cloud that's just so... Just almost not there. I like it. I can change this shape. I'm back to my big wedge-shaped Probably mute this back again because I don't want it to compete with the sky. Now I'm introducing this little fun wedge pad because I find that I can do these trees wonderfully well. What I think I'll do is create some shapes um, by mixing black with some of the colors because I really like having the dark in there. But before I do that, I really need to establish this distant mountain range. I like the color, but it's a little bright. So I'm going to move the color just slightly and get these shapes. And I think this pad will, see how I bend it? And it gives these nice shapes to the distant mountain. Definitely want the range of the mountains to be solid and dark so that I know where they are. Because I'm going to pull that sky down a little further. So now I'm going to grab some black and some very dark green. And I'm just going to put some shapes in here. I'm not going to get all uptight about making it perfect. specific. I'm going to go back to some tree colors and get some shapes in here. Okay, let's put in some smaller shapes back in here. Again, I'm using a little mixture of black and green to just kind of get this suggestion of something going on there. And, um, and then let's create here sort of a mid-ground hill with some dotty little growth on it. Again, I, I, I'm not really concerned about trying to create anything that looks particularly like anything, just texturing it, just texturing the whole thing. One of the other things that I'm seeing is I want to add just a touch of this paler sky color back in in here. One of the things I just love too is that I don't have to use fixative. There's just not much still coming off and they stay these paintings really hold the pastel it's very sheer it's very sheer so I find I don't need to use fixative if fixative is part of your uh, style of painting however uh, there's no reason why you can't use it need to resolve just a little bit down in here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this 
wedge pad again, and I'm going to grab some rust. I haven't used a lot of rust, but it's a close-up color, and I think it'll work. So I'm kind of just going to establish this as the foreground. Touches of grassy strokes in here. Probably the very last little thing that I want to do is to just reestablish some of this brilliant orange and create some shapes in here that are very small but I think will be effective and important. 